The Khazars, Persian, Kur Azerbaijani, Zural, Turkish, Hazerler, Bashkir, Hazerler Tatar, Hurl Zazerler, Hebrew, Kurim Kuzarim, Zazer, Ukrainian, Hazari Chosari, Russian, Hazari Hazari, Hungarian, Khazarik, Zazer, Greek, Chazaroi Chazaroi, Latin, Ghazari, Ghassani were a semi nomadic Turkic people with a confederation of Turkic speaking tribes that in the late 6th century CE established a major commercial empire covering the southeastern section of modern European Russia. The Khazars created what for its duration was the most powerful polity to emerge from the breakup of the Western Turkic Khaganate. Astride a major artery of commerce between Eastern Europe and Southwestern Asia, Khazaria became one of the foremost trading emporia of the medieval world, commanding the western marches of the Silk Road and playing a key commercial role as a crossroad between China, the Middle East and Kievan Rus. For some three centuries c. 650 to 965 the Khazars dominated the vast area extending from the Volga Don steppes to the eastern Crimea and the northern Caucasus. Khazaria long served as a buffer state between the Byzantine Empire and both the nomads of the northern steppes and the Umayyad Caliphate after serving as Byzantium's proxy against the Sasanian Persian Empire. The alliance was dropped around 900. Byzantium began to encourage the Alans to attack Khazaria and weaken its hold on Crimea and the Caucasus, while seeking to obtain an entente with the rising Rus power to the north, which it aspired to convert to Christianity. Between 965 and 969, the Kievan Rus ruler Sviatoslav I of Kiev conquered the capital Atil and destroyed the Khazar state. Determining the origins and nature of the Khazars is closely bound with theories of their languages, but it is a matter of intricate difficulty since no indigenous records in the Hazar language survive, and the state was polyglot and polyethnic. The native religion of the Khazars is thought to have been Tengrism, like that of the North Caucasian Huns and other Turkic peoples. The polyethnic populace of the Hazar Khaganate appears to have been a multi-confessional mosaic of pagan, Tengrist, Jewish, Christian and Muslim worshippers. The ruling elite of the Khazars was said by Judah Halevi and Abraham ibn Dodd to have converted to Rabbinic Judaism in the 8th century, but the scope of the conversion within the Hazar Khanate remains uncertain. Proposals of Hazar origins have been made regarding the Bukharan Jews, the Muslim Kumiks, Kazakhs, the Cossacks of the Don region, the Turkic-speaking Krimchaks and their Crimean neighbors the Karaites to the Moldavian Changos, the Mountain Jews, Subotniks and others. In the late 19th century, a theory emerged that the core of today's Ashkenazi Jews descended from a hypothetical Khazarian Jewish diaspora who had migrated westward from modern Russia and Ukraine into modern France and Germany. This theory still finds occasional support, but most scholars view it with skepticism. The theory is sometimes associated with antisemitism and anti-Zionism. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> Gayula name it, following Zoltan Gomboch, derived Zazer from a hypothetical asterisk Khazar reflecting a Turkic root qaz, to ramble, to roam, being an hypothetical velar variant of common Turkic kez. In the fragmentary Taiz and Turkan inscriptions of the Uyghur Empire 744 the form Khazar is attested, though uncertainty remains whether this represents a personal or tribal name, gradually other hypotheses emerged. Louis Bazin derived it from Turkic Qas, tyrannize, oppress, terrorize, on the basis of its phonetic similarity to the Uyghur tribal name, Khazar. Andras Rona Tas connects it with Kesar, the Pahlavi transcription of the Roman title Caesar. D. M. Dunlop tried to link the Chinese term for Khazars to one of the tribal names of the Uyghur Tokas Ogas, namely the Jaza. The objections are that Uyghur Gesa, Khazar was not a tribal name but rather the surname of the chief of the Cgasagi tribe Kotanezi, Sakari, of the Tokas Ogas, and that in Middle Chinese the ethnonym, Khazars, always prefaced with the word Tujue, Tujue Kesabu, Tujue Kesabu, Tujue Heza, Tujue Heza is transcribed with characters different from those used to render the Qa in the Uyghur word Khazar. After their conversion it is reported that they adopted the Hebrew script, and it is likely that, though speaking a Turkic language, the Hazar chancellery under Judaism probably corresponded in Hebrew. In Expositio in Matthium Evangelistam, Ghazari, presumably Khazars, are referred to as the Hunnic people living in the lands of Gog and Magog and said to be circumcised and Omnum Judaismum observat, observing all the laws of Judaism. While the Hazar language went extinct centuries ago, modern Turkic languages still refer to the Caspian Sea as the 
Hazar C. CF, Hazar University and Hazar Islands in Baku, Azerbaijan. Linguistics <inaudible> 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 Determining the origins and nature of the Khazars is closely bound with theories of their languages, but it is a matter of intricate difficulty, since no indigenous records in the Hazar language survive, and the state was polyglot and polyethnic. Whereas the royal or ruling elite probably spoke an eastern variety of Shaz Turkic, the subject tribes appear to have spoken varieties of Lir Turkic, such as Oguric, a language variously identified with Bulgaric, Chuvash, and Hunnish the latter based upon the assertion of the Persian historian Al-Istakri that the Hazar language was different from any other known tongue. One method for tracing their origins consists in analysis of the possible etymologies behind the ethnonym, Hazar. Topic History Topic Tribal Origins and Early History The tribes that were to comprise the Hazar Empire were not an ethnic union, but a congeries of steppe nomads and peoples who came to be subordinated, and subscribed to a core Turkic leadership. Many Turkic groups, such as the Oguric peoples, including Saragors, Ogres, Onogers, and Bulgars who earlier formed part of the TL Confederation, are attested quite early, having been driven west by the Sabirs, who in turn fled the Asian Avars, and began to flow into the Volga-Caspian Pontic zone from as early as the 4th century CE and are recorded by Priscus to reside in the western Eurasian steppelands as early as 463. They appear to stem from Mongolia and South Siberia in the aftermath of the fall of the Hunnic, Zongnu nomadic polities. A variegated tribal federation led by these Turks, probably comprising a complex assortment of Iranian, Proto-Mongolic, Uralic, and Paleo-Siberian clans, vanquished the Roran Khaganate of the hegemonic Central Asian Avars in 552 and swept westwards, taking in their train other steppe nomads and peoples from Sogdiana. The ruling family of this confederation may have hailed from the Ashina Ashina clan of the West Turkic tribes, though Constantine Zuckerman regards Ashina and their pivotal role in the formation of the Khazars with skepticism. Golden notes that Chinese and Arabic reports are almost identical, making the connection a strong one, and conjectures that their leader may have been Yipishikui Chinese, Yi Pai Shi Gui who lost power or was killed around 651. Moving west, the confederation reached the land of the Akatziroi, who had been important allies of Byzantium in fighting off Attila's army. <laughs> Rise of the Hazar state An embryonic state of Khazaria began to form sometime after 630, when it emerged from the breakdown of the larger Gokturk Khaganate. Gokturk armies had penetrated the Volga by 549, ejecting the Avars, who were then forced to flee to the sanctuary of the Hungarian plain. The Ashina clan whose tribal name was Turk the Strong One appear on the scene by 552, when they overthrew the Rorans and established the Gokturk Khaganate. By 568, these Gokturks were probing for an alliance with Byzantium to attack Persia. An internecine war broke out between the senior eastern Gokturks and the junior West Turkic Khaganate some decades later, when on the death of Taspur Khagan, a succession dispute led to a dynastic crisis between Taspur's chosen heir, the Appa Khagan, and the ruler appointed by the tribal high council, Ashina Shetu, Ashina Shetu the Ishbara Khagan. By the first decades of the 7th century, the Ashina Yabgu Tong managed to stabilize the western division, but upon his death, after providing crucial military assistance to Byzantium in routing the Sasanian army in the Persian heartland, the western Turkic Khaganate dissolved under pressure from the encroaching Tang dynasty armies and split into two competing federations, each consisting of five tribes, collectively known as the Ten Arrows on Oq. Both briefly challenged Tang hegemony in eastern Turkestan. To the west, two new nomadic states arose in the meantime, Old Great Bulgaria under Kubrit, the Duolu clan leader, and the Nushibi subconfederation, also consisting of five tribes. The Duolu challenged the Avars in the Kuban River Sea of Azov area while the Hazar Khaganate consolidated further westwards, led apparently by an Ashina dynasty. 
with a resounding victory over the tribes in 657, engineered by General Su Dingfang. Su Dingfang Chinese overlordship was imposed to their east after a final mop up operation in 659, but the two confederations of Bulgars and Khazars fought for supremacy on the western stepland, and with the ascendancy of the latter, the former either succumbed to Hazar rule or, as under Asperic, Kubrat's son, shifted even further west across the Danube to lay the foundations of the first Bulgarian Empire in the Balkans. C. 679, the Khaganate of the Khazars thus took shape out of the ruins of this nomadic empire as it broke up under pressure from the Tang dynasty armies to the east sometime between 630–650. After their conquest of the lower Volga region to the east and an area westwards between the Danube and the Dniepr, and their subjugation of the Onogor Bulgar Union, sometime around 670, a properly constituted Hazar Khaganate emerges, becoming the westernmost successor state of the formidable Gokturk Khaganate after its disintegration. According to Omeljan Pritsak, the language of the Onogor Bulgar Federation was to become the lingua franca of Khazaria as it developed into what Lev Gumilev called a Steppe Atlantis Stepnaja Atlantida. Stepnatlantida. Historians have often referred to this period of Hazar domination as the Pax Khazarika since the state became an international trading hub permitting Western Eurasian merchants safe transit across it to pursue their business without interference. The high status soon to be accorded this empire to the north is attested by Ibn al-Balhai's Farsnama c. 1100, which relates that the Sasanian Shah, Husra I, Anasirvan, placed three thrones by his own, one for the king of China, a second for the king of Byzantium, and a third for the king of the Khazars. Though anachronistic in retrodating the Khazars to this period, the legend, in placing the Hazar Khagan on a throne with equal status to kings of the other two superpowers, bears witness to the reputation won by the Khazars from early times. <laughs> Hazar state, culture and institutions <laughs> <laughs> Royal diarchy with sacral Khaganate Khazaria developed a dual kingship governance structure, typical among Turkic nomads, consisting of a shad, bak and a kagan. The emergence of this system may be deeply entwined with the conversion to Judaism. According to Arabic sources, the lesser king was called Isa and the greater king Hazar Zakan, the former managed and commanded the military, while the greater king's role was primarily sacral, less concerned with daily affairs. The greater king was recruited from the Hazar House of Notables all Beit Marifin, and, in an initiation ritual, was nearly strangled until he declared the number of years he wished to reign, on the expiration of which he would be killed by the nobles. The deputy ruler would enter the presence of the reclusive greater king only with great ceremony, approaching him barefoot to prostrate himself in the dust and then light a piece of wood as a purifying fire, while waiting humbly and calmly to be summoned. Particularly elaborate rituals accompanied a royal burial. At one period, travelers had to dismount, bow before the ruler's tomb, and then walk away on foot. Subsequently, the charismatic sovereign's burial place was hidden from view, with a palatial structure paradise constructed and then hidden under rerouted river water to avoid disturbance by evil spirits and later generations. Such a royal burial ground is typical of inner Asian peoples. Both the Isa and the Zakan converted to Judaism sometime in the 8th century, while the rest, according to the Persian traveler Ahmad ibn Rusta, probably followed the old Turkic religion. Topic. Ruling elite The ruling stratum, like that of the later Singhasids within the Golden Horde, was a relatively small group that differed ethnically and linguistically from its subject peoples, meaning the Alanoas and Oguric Turkic tribes, who were numerically superior within Khazaria. The Hazar Khagans, while taking wives and concubines from the subject populations, were protected by a Khwarizmian guard corps, or Kamatatis, called the Ursia. But unlike many other local polities, they hired soldiers mercenaries the Junid Murtatsika in al Masodi. At the peak of their empire, the Khazars ran a centralized fiscal administration, with a standing army of some 7 12,000 men, which could, at need, be multiplied two or three times that number by inducting reserves from their nobles' retinues. Other figures for the permanent standing army indicate that it numbered as many as 100,000. They controlled and exacted tribute from 25 to 30 different nations and tribes inhabiting the vast territories between the Caucasus, the Aral Sea, the Ural Mountains, and the Ukrainian steppes. Hazar armies were led by the Kagan Bek and commanded by subordinate officers known as Tarkhans. 
When the Beck sent out a body of troops, they would not retreat under any circumstances. If they were defeated, everyone who returned was killed. Settlements were governed by administrative officials known as Tudans. In some cases, such as the Byzantine settlements in southern Crimea, a Tudan would be appointed for a town nominally within another polity's sphere of influence. Other officials in the Hazar government included dignitaries referred to by Ibn Fadlan as Jaishire and Kundur, but their responsibilities are unknown. Demographics It has been estimated that from 25 to 28 distinct ethnic groups made up the population of the Hazar Khaganate, aside from the ethnic elite. The ruling elite seems to have been constituted out of nine tribes, clans, themselves ethnically heterogeneous, spread over perhaps nine provinces or principalities, each of which would have been allocated to a clan. In terms of caste or class, some evidence suggests that there was a distinction, whether racial or social is unclear, between white Khazars Ak Khazars and Black Khazars. Kara Khazars. The 10th century Muslim geographer Al Istakri claimed that the white Khazars were strikingly handsome with reddish hair, white skin, and blue eyes, while the black Khazars were swarthy, verging on deep black, as if they were some kind of Indian. Many Turkic nations had a similar political, not racial division between a white ruling warrior caste and a black. Class of commoners, the consensus among mainstream scholars is that Istakri was confused by the names given to the two groups. However, Khazars are generally described by early Arab sources as having a white complexion, blue eyes, and reddish hair. The name of the presumed founding Ashina clan may reflect an etymology suggestive of a darkish color. The distinction appears to have survived the collapse of the Khazarian Empire. Later Russian chronicles, commenting on the role of the Khazars in the Magyarization of Hungary, refer to them as white ogres and Magyars as black ogres. Studies of the physical remains, such as skulls at Sarkal, have revealed a mixture of Slavic, other European, and a few Mongolian types. Economy <inaudible> 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 The import and export of foreign wares, and the revenues derived from taxing their transit, was a hallmark of the Hazar economy, though it is said also to have produced isinglass. Distinctively among the nomadic steppe polities, the Hazar Khaganate developed a self-sufficient domestic Saltovo economy, a combination of traditional pastoralism, allowing sheep and cattle to be exported, extensive agriculture, abundant use of the Volga's rich fishing stocks, together with craft manufacture, with a diversification in lucrative returns from taxing international trade given its pivotal control of major trade routes. The Khazars constituted one of the two great furnishers of slaves to the Muslim market the other being the Iranian Samanid emirs, supplying it with captured Slavs and tribesmen from the Eurasian Northlands. It was profits from the latter which enabled it to maintain a standing army of Khwarezm Muslim troops. The capital Atil reflected the division, Karazin on the western bank where the king and his Hazar elite, with a retinue of some 4,000 attendants, dwelt, and Itil proper to the east, inhabited by Jews, Christians, Muslims and slaves and by craftsmen and foreign merchants. The ruling elite wintered in the city and spent from spring to late autumns in their fields. A large irrigated greenbelt, drawing on channels from the Volga River, lay outside the capital, where meadows and vineyards extended for some 20 farsakhs ca. 60 miles? While customs duties were imposed on traders, and tribute and tithes were exacted from 25 to 30 tribes, with a levy of one sable skin, squirrel pelt, sword, dirham per hearth or plowshare, or hides, wax, honey and livestock, depending on the zone. Trade disputes were handled by a commercial tribunal in Atil consisting of seven judges, two for each of the monotheistic inhabitants Jews, Muslims, Christians and one for the pagans. Khazars and Byzantium Byzantine diplomatic policy towards the steppe peoples generally consisted of encouraging them to fight among themselves. The Pechenegs provided great assistance to the Byzantines in the 9th century in exchange for regular payments. Byzantium also sought alliances with the Gokturks against common enemies. In the early 7th century, one such alliance was brokered with the Western Turks against the Persian Sasanians in the Byzantine Sasanian War of 602 628. The Byzantines called Khazaria Turkia, and by the 9th century referred to the Khazars as Turks. 
During the period leading up to and after the siege of Constantinople in 626, Heraclius sought help via emissaries, and eventually personally, from a Gokturk chieftain of the Western Turkic Khaganate, Tong Yabhu Khagan, in Tiflis, plying him with gifts and the promise of marriage to his daughter, Epiphania. Tong Yabhu responded by sending a large force to ravage the Persian Empire, marking the start of the Third Perso-Turkic War. A joint Byzantine-Turk operation breached the Caspian Gates and sacked Durbant in 627. Together they then besieged Tiflis, where the Byzantines may have deployed an early variety of traction trebuchets to breach the walls. After the campaign, Tong Yabhu is reported, perhaps with some exaggeration, to have left some 40,000 troops behind with Heraclius. Though occasionally identified with Khazars, the Gokturk identification is more probable since the Khazars only emerged from that group after the fragmentation of the former sometime after 630. Some scholars argued that Sasanian Persia never recovered from the devastating defeat wrought by this invasion. Once the Khazars emerged as a power, the Byzantines also began to form alliances with them, dynastic and military. In 695, the last Heraclean emperor, Justinian II, nicknamed the slit-nosed, Ho Rhinotmedos after he was mutilated and deposed, was exiled to Cherson in the Crimea, where a Hazar governor Tudin presided. He escaped into Hazar territory in 704 or 705 and was given asylum by Kagan Busser Glavin, Ibozeros Gliabanos who gave him his sister in marriage, perhaps in response to an offer by Justinian, who may have thought a dynastic marriage would seal by kinship a powerful tribal support for his attempts to regain the throne. The Khazarian spouse thereupon changed her name to Theodora. Busser was offered a bribe by the Byzantine usurper, Tiberius III, to kill Justinian. Warned by Theodora, Justinian escaped, murdering two Hazar officials in the process. He fled to Bulgaria, whose Khan Tervel helped him regain the throne. Upon his reinstallment, and despite Busser's treachery during his exile, he sent for Theodora. Busser complied, and she was crowned as Augusta, suggesting that both prized the alliance. Decades later, Leo III ruled 717 to 741 made a similar alliance to coordinate strategy against a common enemy, the Muslim Arabs. He sent an embassy to the Hazar Khagan Bihar and married his son, the future Constantine V ruled 741 to 775, to Bihar's daughter, a princess referred to as Zitzik, in 732. On converting to Christianity, she took the name Irene. Constantine and Irene had a son, the future Leo IV 775 to 780, who thereafter bore the sobriquet, the Hazar. Leo died in mysterious circumstances after his Athenian wife bore him a son, Constantine VI, who on his majority co-ruled with his mother, the Dowager. He proved unpopular, and his death ended the dynastic link of the Khazars to the Byzantine throne. By the 8th century, Khazars dominated the Crimea 650c.950, and even extended their influence into the Byzantine peninsula of Cherson until it was wrested back in the 10th century. Hazar and Farganian Farganoi mercenaries constituted part of the imperial Byzantine Hetaria bodyguard after its formation in 840, a position that could openly be purchased by a payment of seven pounds of gold. <inaudible> <inaudible> Arab-Hazar Wars During the 7th and 8th centuries, the Khazars fought a series of wars against the Umayyad Caliphate and its Abbasid successor. The first Arab Hazar War began during the first phase of Muslim expansion. By 640, Muslim forces had reached Armenia. In 642, they launched their first raid across the Caucasus under Abd ar Rahman ibn Rabia. In 652, Arab forces advanced on the Hazar capital, Balanjar, but were defeated, suffering heavy losses. According to Persian historians such as al Tabari, both sides in the battle used catapults against the opposing troops. A number of Russian sources give the name of a Hazar Khagan from this period as Urbis and describe him as a scion of the Gokturk royal house, the Ashina. Whether Urbis ever existed is open to debate, as is whether he can be identified with one of the many Gokturk rulers of the same name. Due to the outbreak of the First Muslim Civil War and other priorities, the Arabs refrained from repeating an attack on the Khazars until the early 8th century. The Khazars launched a few raids into Transcaucasian principalities under Muslim dominion, including a large-scale raid in 683–685 during the Second Muslim Civil War that rendered much booty and many prisoners. 
There is evidence from the account of al-Tabari that the Khazars formed a united front with the remnants of the Gokturks in Transoxiana. The Second Arab Hazar War began with a series of raids across the Caucasus in the early 8th century. The Umayyads tightened their grip on Armenia in 705 after suppressing a large-scale rebellion. In 713 or 714, Umayyad general Maslama conquered Durbant and drove deeper into Hazar territory. The Khazars launched raids in response into Albania and Iranian Azerbaijan but were driven back by the Arabs under Hassan ibn al numan The conflict escalated in 722 with an invasion by 30,000 Khazars into Armenia inflicting a crushing defeat. Caliph Yazid II responded, sending 25,000 Arab troops north, swiftly driving the Khazars back across the Caucasus, recovering Durbant, and advancing on Balanjar. The Arabs broke through the Hazar defense and stormed the city, most of its inhabitants were killed or enslaved, but a few managed to flee north. Despite their success, the Arabs had not yet defeated the Hazar army, and they retreated south of the Caucasus. In 724, Arab general al Jarrah ibn Abdallah al Hakami inflicted a crushing defeat on the Khazars in a long battle between the rivers Cyrus and Araxes, then moved on to capture Tiflis, bringing Caucasian Iberia under Muslim suzerainty. The Khazars struck back in 726, led by a prince named Barjik, launching a major invasion of Albania and Azerbaijan. By 729, the Arabs had lost control of northeastern Transcaucasia and were thrust again into the defensive. In 730, Barjik invaded Iranian Azerbaijan and defeated Arab forces at Ardabil, killing the general al Jarrah al Hakami and briefly occupying the town. Barjik was defeated and killed the next year at Mosul, where he directed Hazar forces from a throne mounted with al Jarrah's severed head. In 737, Marwan ibn Muhammad entered Hazar territory under the guise of seeking a truce. He then launched a surprise attack in which the Khagan fled north and the Khazars surrendered. The Arabs did not have resources to influence affairs of Transcaucasia. The Khagan was forced to accept terms involving conversion to Islam, and to subject himself to the caliphate, but the accommodation was short-lived as a combination of internal instability among the Umayyads and Byzantine support undid the agreement within three years, and the Khazars reasserted their independence. The suggestion that the Khazars adopted Judaism as early as 740 is based on the idea that, in part, it was, a reassertion of independence with regard to both Byzantium and the Caliphate, while conforming to a general Eurasian trend to embrace a world religion. Whatever the impact of Marwan's campaigns, warfare between the Khazars and the Arabs ceased for more than two decades after 737. Arab raids continued until 741, but their control in the region was limited as maintaining a large garrison at Durban further depleted the already overstretched army. A third Muslim civil war soon broke out, leading to the Abbasid Revolution and the fall of the Umayyad dynasty in 750. In 758, the Abbasid Caliph al-Mansur attempted to strengthen diplomatic ties with the Khazars, ordering Yazid ibn Usaid al-Sulami, one of his nobles and the military governor of Armenia, to take a royal Hazar bride. Yazid married a daughter of Hazar Khagan Bagadar, but she died inexplicably, possibly in childbirth. Her attendants returned home, convinced that some Arab faction had poisoned her, and her father was enraged. Hazar general Ras Tarkhan invaded south of the Caucasus in 762-764, devastating Albania, Armenia, and Iberia, and capturing Tiflis. Thereafter relations became increasingly cordial between the Khazars and the Abbasids, whose foreign policies were generally less expansionist than the Umayyads, broken only by a series of raids in 799 over another failed marriage alliance. Rise of the Rus and the collapse of the Khazarian state By the 9th century, groups of Varangian Rus, developing a powerful warrior merchant system, began probing south down the waterways controlled by the Khazars and their protectorate, the Volga Bulgarians, partially in pursuit of the Arab silver that flowed north for hoarding through the Khazarian Volga Bulgarian trading zones, partially to trade in furs and ironwork. Northern mercantile fleets passing ATIL were tithed, as they were at Byzantine Cherson. Their presence may have prompted the formation of a Rus state by convincing the Slavs, Merja and the Chud to unite to protect common interests against Khazarian exactions of tribute. 
It is often argued that a Rus Khaganate modeled on the Khazarian state had formed to the east, and that the Varangian chieftain of the coalition appropriated the title of Khagan, Khagan as early as the 830s. The title survived to denote the princes of Kievan Rus, whose capital, Kiev, is often associated with a Khazarian foundation. The construction of the Sarkal Fortress, with technical assistance from Khazaria's Byzantine ally at the time, together with the minting of an autonomous Hazar coinage around the 830s, may have been a defensive measure against emerging threats from Varangians to the north and from the Magyars on the eastern steppe. By 860, the Rus had penetrated as far as Kiev and, via the Dnieper, Constantinople. Alliances often shifted. Byzantium, threatened by Varangian Rus raiders, would assist Khazaria, and Khazaria at times allowed the northerners to pass through their territory in exchange for a portion of the booty. From the beginning of the 10th century, the Khazars found themselves fighting on multiple fronts as nomadic incursions were exacerbated by uprisings by former clients and invasions from former allies. The Pax Khazarika was caught in a pincer movement between steppe Pechenegs and the strengthening of an emergent Rus power to the north, both undermining Khazaria's tributary empire. According to the Schechter text, the Hazar ruler King Benjamin CA. fought a battle against the allied forces of five lands whose moves were perhaps encouraged by Byzantium. Though Benjamin was victorious, his son Aaron too faced another invasion, this time led by the Alans, whose leader had converted to Christianity and entered into an alliance with Byzantium, which, under Leo VI the Wise, encouraged them to fight against the Khazars. By the 880s, Hazar control of the Middle Dnieper from Kiev, where they collected tribute from eastern Slavic tribes, began to wane as Oleg of Novgorod wrested control of the city from the Varangian warlords Eskold and Dir, and embarked on what was to prove to be the foundation of a Rus empire. The Khazars had initially allowed the Rus to use the trade route along the Volga River, and raid southwards. See Caspian expeditions of the Rus. According to al Masodi, the Khagan is said to have given his assent on the condition that the Rus give him half of the booty. In 913, however, two years after Byzantium concluded a peace treaty with the Rus in 911, a Varangian foray, with Hazar connivance, through Arab lands led to a request to the Hazar throne by the Khwarizmian Islamic Guard for permission to retaliate against the large Rus contingent on its return. The purpose was to revenge the violence the Rus razias had inflicted on their fellow Muslim believers. The Rus force was thoroughly routed and massacred. The Hazar rulers closed the passage down the Volga to the Rus, sparking a war. In the early 960s, Hazar ruler Joseph wrote to Hazdeh ibn Shaprit about the deterioration of Hazar relations with the Rus, I protect the mouth of the river and prevent the Rus arriving in their ships from setting off by sea against the Ishmaelites and equally all their enemies from setting off by land to Bab. The Rus warlords launched several wars against the Hazar Khaganate, and raided down to the Caspian Sea. The Schechter letter relates the story of a campaign against Khazaria by HLGW recently identified as Oleg of Chernikov around 941 in which Oleg was defeated by the Hazar general Pesach. The Hazar alliance with the Byzantine Empire began to collapse in the early 10th century. Byzantine and Hazar forces may have clashed in the Crimea, and by the 940s Emperor Constantine VII Porphyrogenitus was speculating in De Administrando Imperio about ways in which the Khazars could be isolated and attacked. The Byzantines during the same period began to attempt alliances with the Pechenegs and the Rus, with varying degrees of success. Sviatoslav I finally succeeded in destroying Hazar imperial power in the 960s, in a circular sweep that overwhelmed Hazar fortresses like Sarkal and Tamatarka, and reached as far as the Caucasian Kassigians, Circassians and then back to Kiev. Sarkal fell in 965, with the capital city of Atil following, c. 968 or 969. In the Russian chronicle the vanquishing of the Hazar traditions is associated with Vladimir's conversion in 986. According to the primary chronicle, in 986 Hazar Jews were present at Vladimir's disputation to decide on the prospective religion of the Kievan Rus. Whether these were Jews who had settled in Kiev or emissaries from some Jewish Hazar remnant state is unclear. Conversion to one of the faiths of the people of Scripture was a precondition to any peace treaty with the Arabs, whose Bulgar envoys had arrived in Kiev after 985. A visitor to Atil wrote soon after the sacking of the city that its vineyards and garden had been razed, that not a grape or raisin remained in the land, and not even alms for the poor were available. 
An attempt to rebuild may have been undertaken, since Ibn Haqqal and al muqaddasa refer to it after that date, but by al-Biruni's time 1048, it was in ruins. Aftermath, impact, decline and dispersion Though Polyak argued that the Hazar kingdom did not wholly succumb to Sviatoslav's campaign, but lingered on until 1224, when the Mongols invaded Rus, by most accounts, the Rus Oghuz campaigns left Khazaria devastated, with perhaps many Khazarian Jews in flight, and leaving behind at best a minor rump state. It left little trace, except for some place names, and much of its population was undoubtedly absorbed in successor hordes. Al Mukadasa, writing ca.985, mentions Hazar beyond the Caspian Sea as a district of woe and squalor, with honey, many sheep, and Jews. Kedrenos mentions a joint Rus Byzantine attack on Khazaria in 1016, which defeated its ruler Georgius Sul. The name suggests Christian affiliations. The account concludes by saying, that after Sul's defeat, the Hazar ruler of Upper Media, Sennacherib, had to sue for peace and submission. In 1024 M.S. Tislav of Chernikov one of Vladimir's sons marched against his brother Yaroslav with an army that included Khazars and Kassigans in a repulsed attempt to restore a kind of Khazarian type dominion over Kiev. Ibn al-Athur's mention of a raid of Fadlan the Kurd against the Khazars in 1030 CE, in which 10,000 of his men were vanquished by the latter, has been taken as a reference to such a Hazar remnant, but Barthold identified this Fadlan as Fadl ibn Muhammad and the Khazars as either Georgians or Abkhazians. A Kievian prince named Oleg, grandson of Yaroslav was reportedly kidnapped by Khazars in 1079 and shipped off to Constantinople, although most scholars believe that this is a reference to the Cumans Kipchaks or other steppe peoples then dominant in the Pontic region. Upon his conquest of Mutarakan in the 1080s Oleg Sviatoslavich, son of a prince of Chernikov, gave himself the title, Archon of Khazaria. In 1083 Oleg is said to have exacted revenge on the Khazars after his brother Roman was killed by their allies, the Palovtsi, Cumans. After one more conflict with these Palovtsi in 1106, the Khazars fade from history. By the end of the 12th century, Petashia of Ratisbon reported traveling through what he called Khazaria and had little to remark on other than describing its minim sectaries living amidst desolation in perpetual mourning. The reference seems to be to Karaites. The Franciscan missionary William of Rubruck likewise found only impoverished pastures in the lower Volga area where Ital once lay. Giovanni da Pian del Carpine, the papal legate to the court of the Mongol Khan Gayak at that time, mentioned an otherwise unattested Jewish tribe, the Brutiki, perhaps in the Volga region. Though connections are made to the Khazars, the link is based merely on a common attribution of Judaism. The 10th century Zoroastrian Denkart registered the collapse of Hazar power in attributing its eclipse to the enfeebling effects of false religion. The decline was contemporary to that suffered by the Transoxiana Samanid Empire to the east, both events paving the way for the rise of the Great Seljuk Empire, whose founding traditions mention Hazar connections. Whatever successor entity survived, it could not longer function as a bulwark against the pressure east and south of nomad expansions. By 1043, Kameks and Kipchaks, thrusting westwards, pressured the Oghuz, who in turn pushed the Pechenegs west towards Byzantium's Balkan provinces. Khazaria nonetheless left its mark on the rising states and some of their traditions and institutions. Much earlier, Zitzik, the Hazar wife of Leo III, introduced into the Byzantine court the distinctive kaftan or riding habit of the nomadic Khazars, the Zitzakshan, Zitzakshan, and this was adopted as a solemn element of imperial dress. The orderly hierarchical system of succession by scales Lestvichnaya Sistema, Lestvichna Sistema to the Grand Principate of Kiev was arguably modeled on Hazar institutions, via the example of the Rus Khaganate, the Proto-Hungarian Pontic tribe, while perhaps threatening Khazaria as early as 839 Sarkal, practiced their institutional model, such as the dual rule of a ceremonial Kendi Kundu and a Gyula administering practical and military administration, as tributaries of the Khazars. A dissident group of Khazars, the Khabars, joined the Hungarians in their migration westwards as they moved into Pannonia. Elements within the Hungarian population can be viewed as perpetuating Hazar traditions as a successor state. Byzantine sources refer to Hungary as Western Turkia in contrast to Khazaria, Eastern Turkia. The Gyula line produced the kings of medieval Hungary through descent from Arpad, while the Khabars retained their traditions longer, and were known as Black Hungarians. Fekit Magyarsig. 
Some archaeological evidence from Celarevo suggests the Kabars practiced Judaism since warrior graves with Jewish symbols were found there, including menorahs, shofars, etrogs, lulavs, candle snuffers, ash collectors, inscriptions in Hebrew, and a six pointed star identical to the Star of David. The Hazar state was not the only Jewish state to rise between the fall of the Second Temple 67 to 70 CE and the establishment of Israel 1948. A second state in Yemen also adopted Judaism in the 4th century, lasting until the rise of Islam. The Hazar kingdom is said to have stimulated messianic aspirations for a return to Israel as early as Judah Halevi. In the time of the Egyptian vizier Al-Afdal Shahanshah, D.1121, one Solomon ben Duji, often identified as a Khazarian Jew, attempted to advocate for a messianic effort for the liberation of, and return of all Jews to, Palestine. He wrote to many Jewish communities to enlist support. He eventually moved to Kurdistan where his son Menachem some decades later assumed the title of Messiah and, raising an army for this purpose, took the fortress of Amadiyya north of Mosul. His project was opposed by the rabbinical authorities and he was poisoned in his sleep. One theory maintains that the Star of David, until then a decorative motif or magical emblem, began to assume its national value in late Jewish tradition from its earlier symbolic use by Menachem. The word Hazar, as an ethnonym, was last used in the 13th century by a people in the North Caucasus believed to practice Judaism. The nature of a hypothetical Hazar diaspora, Jewish or otherwise, is disputed. Avraham ibn Dodd mentions encountering rabbinical students descended from Khazars as far away as Toledo, Spain in the 1160s. Hazar communities persisted here and there. Many Hazar mercenaries served in the armies of the Islamic caliphates and other states. Documents from medieval Constantinople attest to a Hazar community mingled with the Jews of the suburb of Para. Hazar merchants were active in both Constantinople and Alexandria in the 12th century. Topic. Religion Topic. Tengrism Direct sources for Hazar religion are not many, but in all likelihood they originally engaged in a traditional Turkic form of cultic practices known as Tengrism, which focused on the sky god Tengri. Something of its nature may be deduced from what we know of the rites and beliefs of contiguous tribes, such as the North Caucasian Huns. Horse sacrifices were made to this supreme deity. Rites involved offerings to fire, water, and the moon, to remarkable creatures, and to gods of the road, cf. Old Turk Yal Tengri, perhaps a god of fortune. Sun amulets were widespread as cultic ornaments. A tree cult was also maintained. Whatever was struck by lightning, man or object, was considered a sacrifice to the high god of heaven. The afterlife, to judge from excavations of aristocratic tumuli, was much a continuation of life on earth, warriors being interred with their weapons, horses, and sometimes with human sacrifices. The funeral of one Tudrun in 711 12 saw 300 soldiers killed to accompany him to the otherworld. Ancestor worship was observed. The key religious figure appears to have been a shamanizing QAM, and it was these cosmum that were, according to the Hazar Hebrew conversion stories, driven out. Many sources suggest, and a notable number of scholars have argued, that the charismatic Ashina clan played a germinal role in the early Hazar state, though Zuckerman dismisses the widespread notion of their pivotal role as a phantom. The Ashina were closely associated with the Tengri cult, whose practices involved rites performed to assure a tribe of heaven's protective providence. The Kagan was deemed to rule by virtue of Qut, the heavenly mandate, good fortune to rule. Christianity Khazaria long served as a buffer state between the Byzantine Empire and both the nomads of the Northern Steppes and the Umayyad Empire, after serving as Byzantium's proxy against the Sasanian Persian Empire. The alliance was dropped around 900. Byzantium began to encourage the Alans to attack Khazaria and weaken its hold on Crimea and the Caucasus, while seeking to obtain an entente with the rising Rus power to the north, which it aspired to convert to Christianity. On Khazaria's southern flank, both Islam and Byzantine Christianity were proselytizing great powers. 
Byzantine success in the north was sporadic, though Armenian and Albanian missions from Durban built churches extensively in maritime Dagestan, then a Hazar district. Buddhism also had exercised an attraction on leaders of both the eastern 552 to 742 and western Kaganates 552 to 659, the latter being the progenitor of the Hazar state. In 682, according to the Armenian chronicle of Movses Dasksharanki, the king of Caucasian Albania, Viraz Tradat, dispatched a bishop Israel to convert Caucasian Huns, who were subject to the Khazars, and managed to bring Alp Ilater, a son-in-law of the Hazar Kagan, and his army, to abandon their shamanizing cults and join the Christian fold. The Arab Georgian martyr Saint Abo, who converted to Christianity within the Hazar kingdom around 779-80, describes local Khazars as irreligious. Some reports register a Christian majority at Samander, or Muslim majorities. Topic. Judaism The conversion of Khazars to Judaism is reported by external sources and in the Hazar correspondence, though doubts persist. Hebrew documents, whose authenticity was long doubted and challenged, are now widely accepted by specialists as either authentic or as reflecting internal Hazar traditions. Archaeological evidence for conversion, on the other hand, remains elusive, and may reflect either the incompleteness of excavations, or that the stratum of actual adherence was thin. Conversion of steppe or peripheral tribes to a universal religion is a fairly well-attested phenomenon, and the Hazar conversion to Judaism, though unusual, would not have been unique. Other scholars have concluded that the conversion of the Hazar elite to Judaism never happened. A few scholars, Moshe Gill, recently seconded by Shaul Stamfer, dismiss the conversion as a myth. Jews from both the Islamic world and Byzantium are known to have migrated to Khazaria during periods of persecution under Heraclius, Justinian II, Leo III, and Romanus Lakapenos. For Simon Shama, Jewish communities from the Balkans and the Bosphor and Crimea, especially from Pantacapium, began migrating to the more hospitable climate of pagan Khazaria in the wake of these persecutions, and were joined there by Jews from Armenia. The Geniza fragments, he argues, make it clear the Judaizing reforms sent roots down into the whole of the population. The pattern is one of an elite conversion preceding large-scale adoption of the new religion by the general population, which often resisted the imposition. One important condition for mass conversion was a settled urban state, where churches, synagogues or mosques provided a focus for religion, as opposed to the free nomadic lifestyle of life on the open steppes. A tradition of the Iranian Judeo-Tats claims that their ancestors were responsible for the Hazar conversion. A legend traceable to the 16th-century Italian rabbi Judah Moscato attributed it to Yitzhak Ha Sangari. Both the date of the conversion, and the extent of its influence beyond the elite, often minimized in some scholarship, are a matter of dispute, but at some point between 740 and 920 CE, the Hazar royalty and nobility appear to have converted to Judaism, in part, it is argued, perhaps to deflect competing pressures from Arabs and Byzantines to accept either Islam or Orthodoxy. The earliest surviving Arabic text text that refers to Hazar Jewishness appears to be that of Ibn Rusta, a Persian scholar who wrote an encyclopedic work on geography in the early 10th century. It is believed that Ibn Rusta derived much of his information from the works of his contemporary Abu al-Jahani based in Central Asia. Christian of Stavelot in his Expositio in Matthium Evangelistam ca. 860-870s refers to Ghazari, presumably Khazars, as living in the lands of Gog and Magog, who were circumcised and omnum Judaism observe it, observing all the laws of Judaism. New numismatic evidence of coins dated 837 eighths bearing the inscriptions Ard al Hazar, Land of the Khazars, or Musa Rasul Allah, Moses as the Messenger of God, in imitation of the Islamic coin phrase, Muhammad Rasul Allah, suggest to many the conversion took place in that decade. Olson argues that the 837 eighths evidence marks only the beginning of a long and difficult official Judaization that concluded some decades later. A 9th-century Jewish traveler, Eldad Hadani, is said to have informed Spanish Jews in 883 that there was a Jewish polity in the East, and that fragments of the legendary Ten Lost Tribes, part of the line of Simeon and half-line of Manasseh, dwelt in the land of the Khazars, receiving tribute from some 25 to 28 kingdoms. 
Another view holds that by the 10th century, while the royal clan officially claimed Judaism, a non normative variety of Islamization took place among the majority of Khazars. By the 10th century, the letter of King Joseph asserts that, after the royal conversion, Israel returned with the people of Khazaria to Judaism in complete repentance. By Persian historian Ibn al Faqih wrote that all the Khazars are Jews, but they have been Judaized recently. Ibn Fadlan, based on his caliphal mission 921 to the Volga Bulgars, also reported that the core element of the state, the Khazars, were Judaized, something underwritten by the Qariti scholar Yaqub Kirkisani around 937. The conversion appears to have occurred against a background of frictions arising from both an intensification of Byzantine missionary activity from the Crimea to the Caucasus, and Arab attempts to wrest control over the latter in the 8th century CE, and a revolt, put down, by the Khavars around the mid-9th century is often invoked as in part influenced by their refusal to accept Judaism. Modern scholars generally see the conversion as a slow process through three stages, which accords with Richard Eaton's model of syncretic inclusion, gradual identification, and, finally, displacement of the older tradition. Some time between 954 and 961, Hasday ibn Shaprit, from Al Andalus, Muslim Spain, wrote a letter of inquiry addressed to the ruler of Khazaria, and received a reply from Joseph of Khazaria. The exchanges of this Hazar correspondence, together with the Schechter letter discovered in the Cairo Geniza and the famous Platonizing dialogue by Judah Halevi, Sefer Ha Khuzari the Hazar, which plausibly drew on such sources, provide us with the only direct evidence of the indigenous traditions concerning the conversion. King Bulan is said to have driven out the sorcerers, and to have received angelic visitations exhorting him to find the true religion, upon which, accompanied by his vizier, he travelled to desert mountains of Warsan on a seashore, where he came across a cave rising from the plain of Tile in which Jews used to celebrate the Sabbath. Here he was circumcised. Bulan is then said to have convened a royal debate between exponents of the three Abrahamic religions. He decided to convert when he was convinced of Judaism's superiority. Many scholars situate this c. 740 CE, a date supported by Halevi's own account. The details are both Judaic and Turkic. A Turkic ethnogonic myth speaks of an ancestral cave in which the Ashina were conceived from the mating of their human ancestor and a wolf ancestress. These accounts suggest that there was a rationalizing syncretism of native pagan traditions with Jewish law, by melding through the motif of the cave, a site of ancestral ritual and repository of forgotten sacred texts, Turkic myths of origin and Jewish notions of redemption of Israel's fallen people. It is generally agreed they adopted rabbinical rather than Karaiti Judaism. Ibn Fadlan reports that the settlement of disputes in Khazaria was adjudicated by judges hailing each from his community, be it Christian, Jewish, Muslim, or pagan. Some evidence suggests that the Hazar king saw himself as a defender of Jews even beyond the kingdom's frontiers, retaliating against Muslim or Christian interests in Khazaria in the wake of Islamic and Byzantine persecutions of Jews abroad. Ibn Fadlan recounts specifically an incident in which the king of Khazaria destroyed the minaret of a mosque in Atil as revenge for the destruction of a synagogue in Dar al Babanaj, and allegedly said he would have done worse were it not for a fear that the Muslims might retaliate in turn against Jews. Hasday ibn Shaprit sought information on Khazaria in the hope he might discover a place on this earth where harassed Israel can rule itself, and wrote that, were it to prove true that Khazaria had such a king, he would not hesitate to forsake his high office and his family in order order to emigrate there. Abraham Harkavi noted in 1877 that an Arabic commentary on Isaiah chapter 48 verse 14, ascribed to Saadia Gaon or to the Karaiti scholar Benjamin Nahawandi, interpreted, The Lord hath loved him, as a reference, to the Khazars, who will go and destroy Babel, i.e., Babylonia, a name used to designate the country of the Arabs. This has been taken as an indication of hopes by Jews that the Khazars might succeed in destroying the caliphate. Topic: <inaudible> Islam. In 965, as the Khaganate was struggling against the victorious campaign of the Rus prince Sviatoslav, the Islamic historian Ibn al-Athir mentions that Khazaria, attacked by the Oghuz, sought help from Khwarezm, but their appeal was rejected because they were regarded as infidels all Kufar, pagans. Save for the king, the Khazarians are said to have converted to Islam in order to secure an alliance, and the Turks were, with Khwarezm's military assistance repelled. It was this that, according to Ibn al-Athir, led the Jewish king of Hazar to convert to Islam. 
Topic: <laughs> Claims of Hazar ancestry. Claims of Hazar origins for peoples, or suggestions that Khazars were absorbed by them, have been made regarding the Slavic Judaizing Subotniks, the Muslim Karachays, Kumiks, Kazakhs, Avars, the Cossacks of the Don region, the Turkic-speaking Krimchaks and their Crimean neighbors the Karaites to the Moldavian Chongos, the Hungarians, the Mountain Jews and others. Turkic-speaking Crimean Karaites known in the Crimean Tatar language as Karailer, some of whom migrated in 19th century from Crimea to Poland and Lithuania have claimed Hazar origins. Specialists in Hazar history question the connection. Scholarship is likewise skeptical of claims that the Tatar-speaking Krimchak Jews of the Crimea descend from Khazars. <laughs> Ashkenazi Hazar theories Several scholars have suggested that the Khazars did not disappear after the dissolution of their empire, but migrated west to eventually form part of the core of the later Ashkenazi Jewish population of Europe. This hypothesis is greeted with skepticism or caution by most scholars. The German Orientalist Karl Neumann, in the context of an earlier controversy about possible connections between Khazars and the ancestors of the Slavic peoples, suggested as early as 1847 emigrant Khazars might have influenced the core population of Eastern European Jews. The theory was then taken up by Abraham Eliyahu Harkavi in 1869, when he also claimed a possible link between the Khazars and Ashkenazi, but the theory that Hazar converts formed a major proportion of Ashkenazi was first proposed to a Western public in a lecture by Ernest Renan in 1883. Occasional suggestions emerged that there was a small Hazar component in East European Jews in works by Joseph Jacobs 1886, Anatole Leroy Beaulieu, a critic of antisemitism, 1893 Maximilian Ernest Gumplowitz, and by the Russian Jewish anthropologist Samuel Weissenberg. In 1909 Hugo von Kutzkera developed the notion into a book-length study, arguing Khazars formed the foundational core of the modern Ashkenazi. Maurice Fishberg introduced the notion to American audiences in 1911. The idea was also taken up by the Polish Jewish economic historian and general Zionist Yitzhak Schipper in 1918. Scholarly anthropologists, such as Roland B. Dixon and writers like H. G. Wells used it to argue that, "...the main part of Jewry never was in Judea," a thesis that was to have a political echo in later opinion. In 1932, Samuel Krauss ventured the theory that the biblical Ashkenaz referred to Northern Asia Minor, and identified it with the Khazars, a position immediately disputed by Jacob Mann. Ten years later, in 1942, Abraham N. Polak, sometimes referred to as Polyak, later professor for the history of the Middle Ages at Tel Aviv University, published a Hebrew monograph in which he concluded that the East European Jews came from Khazaria. D. M. Dunlop, writing in 1954, thought very little evidence backed what he regarded as a mere assumption, and argued that the Ashkenazi Hazar descent theory went far beyond what our imperfect records permit. Leon Polyakov, while assuming the Jews of Western Europe resulted from a panmixia in the first millennium, asserted in 1955 that it was widely assumed that Europe's Eastern Jews descended from a mixture of Khazarian and German Jews. Polyak's work found some support in Salo Whitmayer Baron and Ben Zion Dinner, but was dismissed by Bernard Weinreib as a fiction 1962. Bernard Lewis is of the opinion that the word in Cairo Geniza interpreted as Khazaria is actually Hikari and therefore it relates to the Kurds of the Hikari Mountains in southeast Turkey. The Hazar Ashkenazi hypothesis came to the attention of a much wider public with the publication of Arthur Kosler's The Thirteenth Tribe in 1976, which was both positively reviewed and dismissed as a fantasy, and a somewhat dangerous one. Israel's ambassador to Britain branded it an anti-Semitic action financed by the Palestinians." While Bernard Lewis claimed that the idea was not supported by any evidence whatsoever, and had been abandoned by all serious scholars. Raphael Patai, however, registered some support for the idea that Hazar remnants had played a role in the growth of Eastern European Jewish communities, and several amateur researchers, such as Boris Altuller kept the thesis in the public eye. The theory has been occasionally manipulated to deny Jewish nationhood. Recently, a variety of approaches, from linguistics Paul Wexler to historiography Shlomo Sand and population genetics Iran Elhaik, a geneticist from the University of Sheffield have emerged to keep the theory alive. 
In broad academic perspective, both the idea that the Khazars converted en masse to Judaism, and the suggestion they emigrated to form the core population of Ashkenazi Jewry, remain highly polemical issues. One thesis, held that the Hazar Jewish population went into a northern diaspora and had a significant impact on the rise of Ashkenazi Jews, connected to this thesis is the theory, expounded by Paul Wexler, that the grammar of Yiddish contains a Hazar substrate. In 2018, Kevin Allen Brook cited genetic data to argue against the claim that Ashkenazim have any amount of Khazarian ancestry. Topic: Use in anti-Semitic polemics. According to Michael Barkin, the Hazar hypothesis never played any major role in antisemitism, though he writes that histories of the latter rather oddly overlook the influence it has exercised on American antisemites since the restrictions on immigration in the 1920s. Maurice Fishberg and Roland B. Dixon's works were later exploited in racist and religious polemical literature in both Britain, in British Israelism, and the United States. Particularly after the publication of Burton J. Hendricks' The Jews in America 1923, it began to enjoy a vogue among advocates of immigration restriction in the 1920s. Racial theorists like Lothrop Stoddard, anti-Semitic conspiracy theorists like the Ku Klux Klan's Hiram Wesley Evans, anti-communist polemicists like John O. Beatty and Wilmot Robertson, whose views influenced David Duke. According to Yehoshaphat Harkabi and others, it played a role in Arab anti-Zionist polemics, and took on an anti-Semitic edge. Bernard Lewis, noting in 1987 that Arab scholars had dropped it, remarked that it only occasionally emerged in Arab political discourse. It has also played some role in Soviet anti-Semitic chauvinism and Slavic Eurasian historiography, particularly in the works of scholars like Lev Gumilev. It came to be exploited by the white supremacist Christian movement and even by terrorist esoteric cults like Om Shinrikyo. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Genetic studies. The hypothesis of Khazarian ancestry in Ashkenazi has also been a subject of discussion in the field of population genetics, wherein claims have been made concerning evidence both for and against it. Iran Elhaik argued in 2012 for a significant Hazar component in the paternal line based on the study of Y DNA of Ashkenazi Jews using Caucasian populations, Georgians, Armenians, and Azerbaijani Jews, as proxies. The evidence from historians he used has been criticized by Shaul Stampfer and the technical response to such a position is dismissive, arguing that, if traces of descent from Khazars exist in the Ashkenazi gene pool, the contribution would be quite minor, or insignificant. According to Nadia Abu el Hajj, the issues of origins are generally complicated by the difficulties of writing history via genome studies and the biases of emotional investments in different narratives, depending on whether the emphasis lies on direct descent or on conversion within Jewish history. History. The lack of Hazar DNA samples that might allow verification also presents difficulties. Crimean Karaite claims In 1839, Abraham Furkovich was appointed by the Russian government as a researcher into the origins of the Jewish sect known as the Karaites. In 1846, one of his acquaintances the Russian orientalist Vasily Vasilevich Grigorev theorized that the Crimean Karaites were of Hazar stock. Furkovich vehemently rejected the idea. The allegation, though unfamiliar to the Karaites themselves at the time, was quickly taken up by outsiders. Furkovich successfully petitioned the Russian government to exempt the Karaites from anti-Jewish laws on the grounds that Karaites had immigrated to Europe before the crucifixion of Jesus and thus could not be held responsible for his death. He traveled widely and amassed a large collection of Judaic artifacts, visiting Egypt and Palestine, as well as the Caucasus and Crimea. The authenticity of his collection has been widely challenged among historians, and today Furkovich is widely regarded as a forger who falsified older documents and changed the dates on tombstones, and also exaggerated the size and importance of the kingdom. Many Karaim deny Israelite origins and consider themselves to be descendants of the Khazars, while specialists in Hazar history also question the connection. Brooks' genetic study of European Karaites found no evidence of a Hazar or Turkic origin for any uniparental lineage but did reveal the European Karaites' links to Egyptian Karaites and to rabbinical Jewish communities. In literature 
The Kuzari is an influential work written by the medieval Spanish Jewish philosopher and poet Rabbi Yehuda Halevi c. 1075 Divided into five essays it takes the form of a fictional dialogue between the pagan king of the Khazars and a Jew who was invited to instruct him in the tenets of the Jewish religion. The intent of the work, although based on Hasdai ibn Shaprut's correspondence with the Hazar king, was not historical, but rather to defend Judaism as a revealed religion, written in the context, firstly of Karaiti challenges to the Spanish rabbinical intelligentsia, and then against temptations to adapt Aristotelianism and Islamic philosophy to the Jewish faith. Originally written in Arabic, it was translated into Hebrew by Judah ibn Tibbon. Benjamin Disraeli's early novel Elroy 1833 draws on Menachem ben Solomon's story. The question of mass religious conversion and the indeterminability of the truth of stories about identity and conversion are central themes of Malorad Pavic's best-selling mystery story Dictionary of the Khazars, H. N. Turtle Tobbs Justinian, Merrick Halter's Book of Abraham and Wind of the Khazars, and Michael Chabon's Gentleman of the Road allude to or feature elements of Hazar history or create fictional Hazar characters. Topic. Cities associated with the Khazars Atil, Khazaran, Samander, in the Caucasus, Balanjar, Khazarki, Sambalut, and Samiran, in Crimea and the Taman region, Kerch, Theodosia, Yepatoria, Guzlev, Samkarsh, also called Mutarakan, Tamatarka, and Sudak, and in the Don Valley, Sarkal. A number of Hazar settlements have been discovered in the Mayaki Saltovo region. Some scholars suppose that the Hazar settlement of Sambat on the Dnieper refers to the later Kiev. Topic. See also List of Turkic dynasties and countries Gog and Magog History of Kiev Kuzari List of Hazar rulers Rus Khaganate Rus Byzantine War 860 Rus Byzantine War 907 Rus Byzantine War 941 Rus Byzantine War 968 to 971 Turkic peoples Yarmak Topic Notes Topic References Topic External links The Kievan Letter Scan in the Cambridge University Library Collection. Kazaria.com Resources, Medieval Jewish History, The Khazars The Jewish History Resource Center, Project of the Dinner Center for Research in Jewish History, The Hebrew University of Jerusalem Hazar Historic Maps at the Wayback Machine archived the, 26th of October 2009. the Kitab al-Khazari of Judah Halevi, Full English Translation at Sacred Texts. Com. Ancient lost capital of the Hazar kingdom found.